with only 0.2% of our native forest ecosystem remaining across the island, Ireland is a radically altered environment by the work of our own species. Our flora and fauna have been greatly diminished and our real forest long gone, with monocrops of commercial plantation replacing it, in tandem with an agricultural system of tillage and pasture. There is one bastion remaining of our natural resource, a national reserve of our rich but declining biodiversity, our hedgerows. These hedgerows are now critical for our remaining wildlife. Without enhancement and management, with a ban on further hedgerow destruction, Ireland's agri-food and tourist industry completely lacks credibility in marketing Ireland as a clean, green country. As a nation, we have to wake up to the value of the web-like ecosystem, ancient in some places and more recent than others, which are our hedgerows, if we do not want to become an ecological desert. The hedgerows define the Irish landscape. It's quite unique to Ireland, really, in terms of, of the, the quality of the hedgerows. A hedgerow was um, a boundary, so it's a boundary system to uh, put a wall or a, a system around a town or a village or to delineate um, landscape. Okay. So the farmers in the old days, in order to know their section, they put a hedgerow around it. And that marks, that was the mark, demarcation system. So a hedgerow was like, like some kind of a barrier. And in this case, it was a wall or a, a clay. So you might have had clay with some stones. And then over time, and we're talking, we're going back a long way yeah. in the Irish history. You're going back to the late 17th century when okay. the first hedgerows were put into so, so Ireland. So man, man-made man structures as such? That's right, man-made okay. structures. And, um, and then over time, so over the uh, decades and the centuries now, the hedgerows have become, as I said, an integral part of the Irish landscape system. But what they've become is an incredible uh, 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 source uh, for the biodiversity. So what has happened is, well, whilst the hedgerow was being laid back in the, the maybe hundreds of years ago, or uh, over the last decades in some cases, there were different species of plant or tree that was um, uh, put in okay. the hedgerow uh, to anchor in the system. Okay. So what happens is when you plant the tree, so you plant here, the, this is um, the, from the slope. Oh, the uh, slope, yeah. 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 So let's take the hawthorn, that's the classic. So beautiful hawthorn here. So yeah. this was one of the typical trees of the uh, yeah. Irish um, hedgerow systems. Yeah. And that was planted. And what happens is the root goes down and the root anchors itself in the soil. Yeah. And then, you know, and sucks up its nutrients. But it also helps the drainage, right. uh, you know, of, the, the root of rain. Is, so when it yeah. rains, it goes down through the, 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 the head of the plant, I'd say, down through the trunk and down and brings the water down into okay. the soil. So the, the hawthorn is one species that's very typical. And then over time, you see beautifully here, you see how the bramble, so the, yeah. the, this is the blackberry and this is blackberry season. So we have the blackberries here, beautiful blackberries. Okay. So okay. over time, the blackberry kind of, um, you know, used the hawthorn as a way to creep and climb. Okay. So here you have yeah. a creep and climb, all the blackberries in there. So this hawthorn, and we'll see as we walk, you'll see the haws, the red yeah. berries. Yeah. So this is food for okay. the badger, for, for okay. the bat, for the mammals that feed along the system at night. Okay. But, um, you know, and then it creates a shelter and protection for other creatures. Maybe a fox or something okay. would be in there at night. So over time, the hedgerow system created this massive wealth of biodiversity. So kind of like a, an ecosystem in itself, really. It's become Absolutely. an ecosystem it in has. itself. And how people describe them is, they say they're like linear corridors. Right, okay. Yeah. Through our landscape in Ireland. Yeah. And in Ireland, we're um, forest poor. Very forest we, poor. Very yeah. forest poor. We don't yeah. have a lot of uh, tree cover. Yeah. But the hedgerows provide us with a full... Yeah. Uh, corridor right through the the island of Ireland yeah. of uh, of woodland, so these are like a woodland system, and so like I talk about the hawthorn, but as we go, you see there's trees, yeah. there's ash yeah. trees, there's oak trees, there's different species that are integrated 
into the hedge hedgerow, yeah. and they are creating like a canopy, a canopy of wealth yeah, for I, biodiversity. It's really, for me, as you can see, I yeah. get very excited very, about, very the, about the, the, the hedgerows yeah. because, like, from the base up, yeah. you have so much uh, available. And like, you know, I always talk about what you can see. So we can see yeah. flies, yeah. and we can see the birds, yeah. and we saw dragonflies just yes. passing by there recently. You see the ivy up here. Yeah. But what? What you don't see, and this is what I love, is mm. in the cracks. Yeah. You yeah. have, look, see the old wall in there yeah. and the lichens. Absolutely. So you have the green lichens, you have the moss. This hedgerow is, is I suppose, what you call a, a mature hedgerow. Yeah. And um, hedgerows really and, and their importance. Um, well, I suppose the, the, the more mature it is, the more important it is because you have a. You have a whole heap of berries there. Yeah, see those. Yeah. You have white thorn, yeah. uh, black thorn, uh, spindle. Then there's a couple of trees of sycamore and hawk chestnut thrown in there. There's some ash around the place there's as well. There's some ash, um, there's bramble. So yeah. the more species you'll have in any hedgerow, uh, the more fruit that'll be produced, the more seeds that'll be produced, uh, the more pollen, the more nectar that bees and, and pollinators will get off of it. Yeah. Uh, the more shelter you'll get from livestock and I suppose on top of all of that then um, hedgerows give us the, the, the typical patchwork quilt type landscape that, that Ireland is famous for. I mean if you're flying overhead it's the first thing that hits you yeah. when you, when you, it, when it you look down. It is quite unique to Britain and Ireland certainly. Uh, yeah, isn't it? That, it's, that, it's the typical that's landscape and I, I suppose around here this is a real intensive uh, farmland uh, and it's lowland farmland and um, hedgerows are very often all we have left you know uh, woodland has gone you know yeah. thousands of years yeah um you know over the last hundred years i suppose a lot of the land was drained um and and some of the hedgerows were removed but we still have a, a good few hedgerows and they're probably one of our, of our yeah. uh, most important uh, wildlife habitats that, yeah, uh, that are left you refer I, th I think there was a figure of of the original woodland left of something like one quarter of one percent that's all because the enemy faster than I'm Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. I mean, most of what's referred to as woodland is commercial plantation. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. a lot of it. And so what's yeah. what you're saying is what's what fragments of the of the natural environment that or absolutely. that original environment are actually yeah. contained in the. In yeah, the and and these these were and still are um, ancient boundaries. The, the, these hedgerows would have been there for the last four or five hundred years, okay. and would have been you know predominantly man-made. Um, they, they, they are, they are farm boundaries, but they can also be parish boundaries, okay. and indeed county boundaries. So they have huge historical significance. Okay. Yeah. So, um, like here, so we've just come up here now yeah. um, to the top of this hedgerow, and just here beside us is an old tomb. Okay. An old portal tomb, as far well as I know. Okay. So Going what? What? Hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay. So very, very old. So when this old hedgerow was yeah. being set to yes. define a boundary here. and in this case a pathway yeah. then the tomb would already have been here right so whoever you know farmer at the time yeah that was making it probably was quite aware so they were so it looks like they respected this so this they were oh this it, they, yeah they had to respect yeah it. okay this is like an old grave yeah you know and, I mean, and all sorts of folklores and traditions uh, absolutely and, and, and yeah. that would come along with that yeah exactly as well. And um, and you see how ancient this one is. You mm. can see the beautiful coloured lichens yeah. Uh, yeah. on the rock. And then this, the interesting thing here is you have a, a, a very mature hawthorn tree. Yeah, which and grows it's, very it's slowly. integrated into it. It's, all, it's, it's actually, all part of the structure it's almost. It's all part it? of the structure. Yeah. Now this to me is hidden Ireland. Yes. Because I've come here many times over many, many years and I've never seen anyone well. here. Okay. So I'm always on my own. Right. Now I know some people, what they like to do is they like to just sit by it. Right. You know? Right. And just, like even, even to touch it. Yeah. Do you know, even to yeah. touch it. There's something, you know, yeah. it's again, it's like a connection. Yeah. And it's like a, a sense and a feeling of respect for the earth. Absolutely. So back here. And continuity and, and, continuity and time. And time. Yeah. And yeah. remember, someone, we don't know who, but someone was buried here. Right. And it probably was a sacred ceremony at the time. And it shows us that Ireland, the history of Ireland, mm. goes back a long way. Wrong. And that people, you know, lived here and they lived in the land and of the land yeah. and they probably respected the land. So this is just integrated into the hedgerow system. And you can see again, like we have the nettle yeah, here, we have a bit of wood sorrel here, the mm. beautiful wood sorrel. Yeah. Now I, I love the wood sorrel because you see it's got a little 
heart. Yes, the heart. it's like a tree so of a green heart. I'd yeah. often say to the children when I'd be bringing them on the walks, yes. I'd be saying, look, Valentine's Day, just take <laughs> just one of those take one and of give them. it to your mother or your yeah. father, you yeah, know? Beautiful, yeah, And then you idea. have a bit of pea, wild pea here, the veg, oh, yes. Yes. The, the different types of veg yeah, and that. Of course, uh, yeah, and yeah. Um, so again, uh, the, you have, Oh, the blackberries, yes, the, the like ferns, yeah. uh, the ivies crawling up the hawthorn. So, uh, yeah. a big, big um, sycamore above us again. Just this so, area. like we're surrounded yeah. again in biodiversity. Absolutely. And native. Yeah, you know, a native, lot of native. Native biodiversity. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, some of the species, like the sycamore, you know, probably came in hundreds of years ago into yeah. Ireland, you know? Yeah. But a lot of the species here in front of us now uh, are native. And certainly the lichens, as we said earlier, really good indicator of healthy of, environment, yeah. clean air. Yeah. So it's really kind special. Of an indi indicator and we're in the shade, you can almost, even though it's a beautiful sunny uh, very uh, cool. day, it's, it's very cool. cool. Yeah. And you almost can feel the moisture. Yes. You feel the moisture yeah. is coming off yeah. the vegetation. So all that vegetation, it's sucking in the sunlight. Yeah. And this evening then, when the sun goes down, it'll transpire. The moisture yeah. will come out. I, I suppose in the last few years, I, you were referring to the hedge removal back, and I remember being brought up in the country myself back mm. in the 70s and 80s, there was mm. a real drive. There was. And I think recently I'm beginning to see, when I'm driving around West Wadford and places like that, mm. um, a lot more hedgerow removal, what's 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 driving that and what do you think well, about that? Well I suppose um, since, since quotas were removed, um, farmers have uh, expended... This is the milk, milk quotas. Milk, yeah, yeah. yeah. Farmers ha have expended their, their farms and, you know, hedgerows are often seen as, uh, you know, being in the way. If, you know, if you have if you have a, a five acre field and you put two or three hundred cows into it, it suddenly yeah. becomes very yeah. small. So very small. The, yeah. the, the tendency is to, is to take out the hedgerow and, and, and uh, increase the size of the field. And likewise, you know, for tillage farmers, a lot of the machinery now is, is gone quite big. And uh, that uh, mitigates against uh, uh, small fields as well. Yeah. So uh, a lot of the, the problem with all of this um, is that the, there is no incentive there for farmers to, to okay. retain a lot of these habitats okay. uh, and people need to realize that the farmers are paid to produce food yeah. uh, they're actually not paid to look after the environment uh, or what we call delivery of public goods whether it is um, clean air or, or clean water or, or uh, you know retaining habitats for wildlife yeah they're not paid for that there's or no even incentive. things like like cli we, there's a lot of talk about climate change and mitigation Absolutely. of climate change all, all, so. all of those um, species there all of those white thorns th those large uh, black thorns the trees yeah, they're taking here. carbon in from the environment uh, so they're, they're reducing our carbon footprint but uh, like i said um, you know farmers are, are not paid for that so uh, like in any walk of life in any business that anyone is in there are incentives there for uh, the way a person should work and, and yeah. uh, the goals that they need to achieve. Yeah. That incentive needs to be put in place. Yeah. And you like to talk about the environment a lot, but yet its policies, don't, they seem to contradict each they other. They do, they do, because historically a lot of those payments and a lot of the subsidies were, again, they were production driven. Yeah. The more you produce, the more you get, yeah. which was counterproductive to having a, a healthy environment. Yeah. And, yeah. and that uh, mitigates against... Uh, you know, retaining hedgerows and yeah. retaining habitats like wetlands and stuff yeah. as well. And so, w would you be of the opinion that, and um, speaking as a farmer yourself, that if most farmers, if those, if those payments and those subsidies were tweaked, and we'll say encouraged farmers were encouraged, are encouraged, actually paid to maintain these Absolutely. hedgerows and other environmental, like, that they would do, they, people, they would do it. People need to realise that that hedgerows and and any other habitats, they they have to be maintained. Yeah. The, the easy so there's thing. A cost, there's there a is cost a cost to that. To what did we hear on these? There's a kind of um. So these these are slows. Oh, there's just slows. Yep. Yeah. Um, these are slows. These are um, paws. Oh, they're slows. They'd, yeah. they'd be quite they'd be quite bitter now, wouldn't they? They would. Yeah. yeah. That's what you make your your slow gin or your yes. slow wine. And gin gin slow gin has become very trendy. Absolutely. Again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And and uh, that's your black thorn slows from the black thorn and haws from the white thorn. Okay. And if you go up here, this is um. This is actually, um, there's a story behind it. This. this is a spindle. Oh. And spindle isn't... Um, this one here, the green, the the green pink, one. The pink... Uh, oh, the pink. The pink berries. Yes, yes. Now, for years and years, like I said, we, we were shaving that hedge. Yeah. And um, we, I know that it was only when we started to, and allowed it grow yeah. that we realized this spindle was here. Right. Now, I remember uh, my father talking years ago uh, about uh, a cuckoo. That the, oh, the yes. cuckoo, you'd always see him on the pegwood tree 
Now, right. I never knew what a pigwood was yeah. until I asked him recently and he said uh, never heard the, of it. Uh, pigwood is it's actually spindle. Oh, that's just another name for spindle. So, so yeah. the, 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 in my father's time, back 14, 50 years ago, there was always a cuckoo in this field and oh, right. he'd always be feeding on the spindle. Oh, and and there was actually a moth, a spindle moth. Okay. And it, it's, it's the caterpillar that he was feeding on. But the cuckoo was long gone. But for years, when we were cutting this hedge, the spindle was gone as well. So okay. maybe there's the. I don't yeah. think that's the leak, but it uh, it is uh, kind of stark, really. That yeah. when when it's only now that you realise that that spindle was there and a lot for years of, and, and years, and a lot but of these never yeah. never got the chance to yeah. to grow and produce fruit. And a lot of the species that would we say, like you say, the cuckoo has fed on very specific uh, uh, other species absolutely. that needed obviously plant a very specific plant. Exactly. So it's kind of like a cascade. Yeah, a cascade when you absolutely. remove something, yeah, there are and the consequences species, are down, uh, down, down, all the way down, down the line. Yeah, and it's that's at the bottom. Yeah. Like if you don't have the plants, you won't have the insects. If you won't have the insects, you don't have the birds. The capacity to actually see it is so important as well, because yeah. a lot of people and and we can all be like in very busy lives. Um, moving along and not passing this and even just say look take five minutes to to look yeah. at this is I, I think you made the point earlier on about our our, our health and 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 mental health as yeah. well yeah. um and it, i think there's a lot of there's a lot of research being done now um i think there's a lot of research being done in places like finland and stuff like that on um mental health and nature and yeah. if you're exposing people even in urban environments to trees and biodiversity it actually has positive benefits yeah. for mental health yeah so, I mean, places like this are actually very, very important. Yeah. Well, you see, I think if we look at this, and there's an abundance of species here, again, it, it's a healthy environment. Hmm. And if we are standing here in a healthy environment, the air is fresh, um, you know, a lot of vegetation, Yeah. that's looking good. If yeah. this environment wasn't good, you wouldn't have the lichens, you yes. wouldn't have the blackberries. Yes. So this is an indication yeah. of the good, healthy Irish environment okay. and the fact we're here on my doorstep which yeah. is Tremor in yeah. Waterford Very lucky. showing this to you yeah. is a privilege Absolutely. you know it's an absolute privilege you're, you're not only are you are you farming cows um, you're also you're, you're also farming bees if you like but you're a bee Absolutely. you're a beekeeper as well yeah can you, can you just t t tell me a bit about that well um, my father always kept bees and right. uh, okay. until I suppose about 10 years ago uh, he, when he, he handed them over to me and trying to take them or leave them um, it changes your mindset completely does it? because uh, the way I would have farmed uh, 10 or 15 years ago again you're focusing on producing food produce as much food as you, as you can and the more income will come in the more yeah. food, more income so then when you have bees even though we never are rarely sold it uh, as honey we, we we give it away to, to neighbours and friends. I was of the same mindset. So, you know, you get as much honey as we can. But how, how do you do that then? So you, you need you need wildflowers. Yeah. You need uh, trees. You need, uh, you know, shrubs like white thorn, black thorn. All of those contribute to, to the honey production. And so suddenly there was a kind of a contradiction. Uh, you know, we would have been uh, like all of these fields would have been manicured. Right. You know, Ten or okay. fifteen years ago, you know, we would have shaved them all nice, neat, and tidy. Yeah. And suddenly, okay, uh, now we actually need to let them grow if we need to produce honey. Okay. So there was a total change of mindset, and um, now we let it grow. We provide a margin at yeah. the, at, the, at the edge. Um, the hedgerow is, is, is only trimmed at the side so that um, yeah, it, it's, it's allowed, it's allowed yeah, grow yeah. Uh, and you get the full benefit then of the blossom and you get yeah. the full well, benefit. And it's still, it's still not, because I see a lot of hedgerows trimmed to, to they're, they're really just hedges if you like. Yeah. Whereas this one, it's, not, it's still not encroaching into your field. No, you're, not, you're not losing no, a huge amount. You're not. Yet you've a lot of, there's a lot going on. There is, the and, and, and the margin is where you'll have your oil flow. Yes, at the know. bottom. At the bottom. Yeah. You're not going to have at the edge. Uh, that's the edge you, kind of exactly. Thing where that's where you're going to have all your, your pollinators. Species. And you've got a lot of your like um, nettles and stuff. Yeah, as well, which you can really, see yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. The difference where, where you can still this this hedge hasn't been cut for probably ten or fifteen years. Okay. But you can still see where the new growth. Yeah. It's is, all coming. Is, it's, it's, it's from all here out up. From, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So for years and years, there would have been, you know, no value whatsoever. Okay, so we've been age. cut right back into the cut wood. Cut right back in and yeah. cut down on the top as well. Okay. Uh, and look lovely. <laughs> yeah, look very, I'm, I'm sure, it looks very neat from and very a, tidy. From a, a human point of view, but yeah. from a wildlife point of view, uh, 
you know, it would have had very little value compared to the way it is now. Yeah. And I suppose that's that's a kind of a change in mentality for it people is, it's as well. The tidiness, the tidiness, there's the tidiness, a it's tidiness, a huge problem. Order, it's a huge, neatness, huge problem. Even we're we're so yeah. humanized into into thinking that you know neat is good. Yeah. But neat is is not good if if if, if you're uh, if you're uh, a species of wildlife. Yeah. They uh, need somewhere. They, they need, need something. Somewhere. I mean, they're, they're yeah. flying overhead and they're not going to land in the grass field there because yeah. you know there's, there's nothing predators to, and there's yeah. nothing there to eat. Yeah. They're too open as they're well. Too then. Open, yeah. Absolutely. They need cover. Yeah. 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 If you if you take um, uh, you, John Lusby's work with Birdwatch Ireland, where where uh, he he has a, a tracking device on, on the a, on the barn owl, owl. On the barn owl. Yeah. right, yeah, yeah. You'll see the barn owl will will work all the hedgerows. He goes, he, he does it in squares. Okay. He flies in squares, so he goes down one side of the hedgerow. He'll go up over the other, down the other. That's where the food is, and that's where the protection is. Yeah. He's not going to cross the field. No, you're not going to see a barn owl out in the middle of no, the field. No, There's nothing so there for him. They're, they're corridors, yeah. and their corridors, likewise, bats are the very right. same. So wildlife, what we're talking about really is, and it's not just it's not just the trees and shrubs and plants we see, it's the, it's the other species, the, the flora and the, the animals absolutely. and the birds. Yeah. Bats, and bats the, use them as corridors, barn owls, long-eared owls, they all use them as corridors. And, and um, even, you know, a fox or a badger, yeah. Yeah, you, rarely you, you won't see them, they'll always they're go beside the hedge yeah. because that's yeah. where... That's They're where the cover is. So if they need to, yeah. if they see a predator species right. or, or a human, they'll the, the escape they'll, route. They'll, mm. yeah. And then you start to see like, the different types of flies. Yeah. And you see the but uh, you see butterflies, you see yeah. dragonflies. Yeah. You'll see the bees. The there's an, types there's a, of bees. Yeah, there's an awful lot of life. Just just just, just in this little section here in front yeah. of us now. I mean, look, yeah. we've got we've got sort of grasses. I mean, That's I, right. I, I, Mosses. mosses. The mosses are gorgeous. We've got the ivy. Yeah, I mean, I'm, right. I'm very much, you yeah. know, we've got the bramble here. Yeah. And look what ferns. you have as well. They yeah. trap things. So the, the hedgehog oh, yeah, yeah. trapping yeah, feathers. There's a pigeon feather. So, there, yeah. so maybe, you know, that's trapped there. Maybe yeah. next year, if it was still trapped, it could yeah. be used for a nest. Yeah. yeah. So, so they're like building blocks yes. and foundations. These yes. are foundations for life. Yeah. You know, and like you said, there is huge. There's a huge uh, amount. Huge of, there's a huge amount of life. Yeah. You know, even ju just to the even to the amateur eye. Yeah. If you stand here and just let it. Let yeah, look, even look, look. See yeah. All the little bugs up around the tree. Yes. There's an awful lot of insect yeah. life around huge, yeah. around the tree. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. And there's a beautiful ash behind us yeah, as well. Yeah. There's a beautiful so ash there. So that's their yeah. own yeah. mountain ash. It's a beautiful tree. Yeah. That's a beautiful area. I suppose, in a way, the the grass the grass feeds the cows, and like I suppose, in a, in a sense, the, the the hedgerows and the wildflowers and all those other species are kind of like the the grass equivalent for the bees. Absolutely, they need, absolutely. They, they so need it's it's it's. I mean, that electric fence beside yeah. the the hedge, uh, that is the, the the conundrum. How how far out? How much do you give? Yeah. The, how the much wildlife? do you give? Where, where you put this is is so it's so relevant. Yeah. The the. This is the, this is your, your wildlife and your biodiversity, and this is your farm production. Yeah. So, you put this right into the hedge, and you're decreasing your biodiversity, and you take it out here. Uh, yeah. And you're, you've, you're, you're encroaching you're, onto, you're the, onto the, the economics your farm of the farm production. Yeah. So, <coughs> where where do you draw the line? Yeah. And this is the this is the, the conundrum, like you know. Yeah. Um, so you've know, obviously so you obviously made a decision here. Well, we we, here, we made right? a decision because yeah. I I just get great enjoyment out of, out of seeing the wildlife but yeah. um, you know you've got to see it from a, a farmer's perspective and from a, a profit perspective yeah. there's probably uh, you know that that's a nice chunk of ground that's gone it is yeah. so that's going to impact on a farmer's profit yeah but it, 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 it also impacts on the environment and that's your your you know you're doing things for pollinators uh, you're creating wildlife corridors and you're also, you know, aesthetically, I suppose it's it's pa it's creating that that patchwork quilt type yeah. landscape that, that Ireland is famous yeah. for. But yeah. really, what you're what you're constantly talking about is a kind of a balancing act between it's a balancing act between economics pushing up against pushing up against against, against the environmental and and, and uh, against the delivery of, of yeah. public goods that farmers yeah. can 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 deliver. But I suppose the the challenge there is to bring an economic value to this stuff as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, I think that's the whole thing, John. Yeah. Really, is that. There has to be, at the moment, there is no value on that. Yeah. There, there has to be a value on, on what's inside the wire here. Envir environmental services. Environmental services. Yeah. There has to be a value on that. Yeah. And until there is a value, the hedgerows will keep being taken out and, you know, we'll keep decimating the environment. But that provides a service that's not being paid for. Yeah. So really the challenge is to say, like, when someone would come along here now, maybe another 
another farmer or another mm, member of the public mm. might come along and say, God, that's enough. That's waste ground, that's a waste there. Exactly. So really what you, it's about educating yeah. actually of what's going on here with, with pollinator species, which directly pollinate a lot mm, of the crops mm, mm. We, we use, and also taking carbon out of the air because mm, there's a mm, huge mm. consciousness now yeah. of climate change. Yeah. Um, and and uh, as you said, they are waste grown. Like this is yeah, the uh, term. It's so negative. Yes, you know you've waste grown. You have you, um, you know uh, scrub. Yeah. Uh, all of these terms are the negative terms. What about the curlew? I yeah. mean the cry of the curlew. So yeah. I I'm old enough to remember. Very evocative. Yeah. Oh, uh, Eamon de Butler yeah. and yes, Garrett von yes, Gelderen. Yes, yes, to the waters and the, the, wild, the waters yeah. in the wild and yeah. and the sound of the curlew, and now we are being told, and we're being told. Fast. We're very close we're to it very disappearing close from our to it becoming extinct, extinct in our yeah. environment. Yeah. And do we want to lose it? Yeah. And why are we losing it? Habitat loss. Yeah. And are we going to enable that and allow it to happen in our lifetime? Or are we going to try to protect it? And we may not be successful, but at least we should try. We should. We should. It's incumbent on us. Yeah. And what could to what, what could that. what could we do on a practical level? What people can people do, or what needs to be done, even at a policy level or a higher level? What what can be done to stop that yeah. um, destruction? If like, or, or start to point us towards, I suppose, a place where we're nurturing nature more, or caring for it more, or just more aware of it. Yeah. Well, the first is our language. We need to talk about nature as something that we're part of, hmm. and something that we respect. And as we see here today, something mm. that we actually can love yeah. and want to respect. And we need to uh, recognize that in all of our policies, whatever we're doing, be it in transport, in farming, in terms of agriculture, in terms of business development, small businesses setting up, we need to recognize that we have to protect in order to enable sustainability. Yeah. So I think we've gone so far that we've lost the ability to think about protecting nature. Yeah. And I, can, I feel I can say that as a senator yeah. now in Leinster House. Yeah. Because I see how, in some cases, ministers are trying to push, leg and push legislation through. And it's legislation that is absolutely going to damage the environment. Yeah. Yeah. And I absolutely oppose that. Several different species of, of bumblebees, solitary okay. bees, hoverflies, all performing, you know, yeah. pollination. So pollinators in general are hugely important and uh, the only way you'll improve the, the lot of pollinators is, is, is wildflowers yeah, or, yeah. or hedgerows. Uh, if, if they don't have, have hedgerows or wildflowers, well, there's no yeah. food. So I suppose the, the health of the pollinator in the bee, in, in, in this case the bees over here mm. or other types of bees mm. they're an indicator of how healthy Absolutely. or how diverse our environment is I, as well exactly. then. If, yeah. if, if you're living in an, uh, in an area where, where that's you know sterilised that there's no hedgerows, no trees, no wildflowers um, you won't get honey there. Okay. Now, I mean any beekeeper that, that moves bees from place to place they'll be able to tell you yeah. that, or that you get nothing in there no down there yeah. is a great place or so on and so forth so if you it's, just it's have a massive a, massive we'll say massive uh, one just one field where just all the, that, that, yeah. that there's nothing on it you, there's, you, no there's nothing there's, there's not going to be you enough you need wildflowers yeah